more than 30 years of working life, I've seen a, a big shift in, uh, um, in the cultural life of Russia in relation to the rest of the world. Um, uh, and I think the shift, and it's an important and necessary and valuable shift, is from protectionism, from the privileged insight of tradition, into understanding that, yes, Russian culture is special to Russia, but that people are universal. So whilst Boris Godunov is a great masterpiece with its very powerful roots in Russian culture and Russian tradition, it isn't only about Russia any more than any great work of art can be so narrowly defined. And Russia's cultural reaching out to the rest of the world, which we've seen so much in the last 20 years, uh, uh, has opened very interesting channels and there is much in common. And the exciting thing about approaching a work like Boris Godunov is to see what is the same and what is different to see what has changed between now and the 16th century and what is the same. To see what is the same in experience here in Russia and in other places. How special is it? That, I think, is always a very interesting thing when one's working. After all, the orthodox faith has a sense of the true faith only if you're orthodox. Yes, but practically uh, the Orthodox faith plays apparently quite a strong part in Boris Godunov. The people are addressed as Orthodox faith. That is how the people are defined in the first scene and how they're spoken of. That they are manipulated as the Orthodox faith as well, politically. So we're already in a very interesting arena where the established church is being led by the state. History is incredibly subjective. History is a lie. It's based on the truth, but it's very, very much in the hands of whoever's telling it. So we see a historical figure via Karamzin's Chronicles, through Pushkin's play via Mussorgsky. We're miles away from a real historical character. We're in the realms of art, we're in the realms of invention, we're in the realms of theatre. We're not in the realms of telling the story, the historically accurate details. We're in the world of metaphor. It's, that it's a great piece, and therefore one's dealing with greatness. That's a head start. That's already way ahead. The material is fantastically rich, good and detailed and nuanced in itself. The effort and the work is to see what that material is and to make it as clear and actual as possible. I'm fascinated by Boris, um, by his relationship with his son, who is of course uh, uh, written in the role. He's there at the coronation scene, Fyodor. When we first see Boris, he's written to be with him. The Tseren scene, of course, is with Fyodor. He's with him at his death. He's with him in Vasily Blazheny. It's always with the son Fyodor. And like all men, it's not enough for him to have power. He must live on through his son. His drive to power makes him desperate, unhappy, and breaks him. But he wants to give that unhappiness to his son. That's a fascinating, rich, and very complicated human being, and a very interesting one to bring to life.